Hey friend, welcome to Self Transformed, a podcast dedicated to transforming your health in less time and guilt-free through the power of habit hacking. This isn't your typical wellness podcast, friend, so hang on tight. I'm your host, Emily Nichols, habit and fitness coach and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I know the struggle is real when it comes to taking care of you. As a busy working mom myself, my clients and I have felt physically and emotionally drained, but lack the time and confidence to actually make ourselves a priority. Plus, all the health advice out there is so confusing and overwhelming, right? Redefining what true health really means paired with habit strategy from the female perspective has been the key to empowering my clients and even myself to finally create a consistent, healthy lifestyle that doesn't feel hard or just like another thing on your long to-do list. I'm now on a mission to equip you with these same sustainable habit hacks and affordable tools to help reset your habits in any season of your life in order to help you thrive. So if you're ready to habit hack your health and create your transformation together, then let's do this. You're listening to episode 182 of Self Transformed. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. Oh my goodness. Did you hear the big announcement I made last week? I have launched a brand new program that is going to be so transformative. I'm so excited about it. I have been building it based off of talking to you all. My girls in the society, clients, Instagram followers, friends, (laughs) everyone. And I can't wait because you're not going to find another healthy habit program like this. So I'm so excited to be launching Habit Transformation Boot Camp on January 2nd. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. So if you are wanting to create your own clear and flexible healthy habit plan, this is for you because in all honesty, it was made with you in mind, really. So if you have ever found yourself saying, oh my gosh, I just, I'm just white knuckling my way, trying to do these habits. They feel hard because life is happening. It's just not working out for me. You know you should make your health a priority, but you're just so overwhelmed or you feel guilty or that you don't have time to actually take care of yourself. Thus, your loved ones aren't getting the best of you. And maybe you've fallen off the wagon and you're chasing it down the road and you just can't catch it. So it's time for some boot camp. It's time to go to boot camp, okay? So I'm recruiting now. I'm only taking 10 ladies. It's going to be a very, very unique, and I'll tell you why it's going to be unique, a unique six-week live group coaching experience with me and you and nine other ladies. I can't wait. So it includes one-on-one coaching. So you and I are going to have some private time, private time. (laughs) We're going to, that sounded weird. We're going to have some one-on-one calls together to really give you some more customized coaching and accountability. There'll be group coaching because as women, I like to do, we like to do things together sometimes or not. Um, But with this, I think we need that accountability in a group and just for you to see that you're not alone. There's going to be some self-paced modules. Everything is only going to be focused on your fundamental needs. So what do we talk about here? We talk about fitness food freedom, and movement. I'm going to give you a plan for each of those, which is what is going to make this so unique is that you get to pick which tracks. You're going to learn all the habit strategy. You are going to learn how the habit strategy works as a woman, as having all the distractions, the overwhelm, and you're going to pick which track. So I will give you an actual um, fitness ebook. I will give you some pre-recorded walking meditations, and I'm going to give you my food freedom guide. And you pick which one, and you're going to track it for 21 days. Oh my gosh. So at the end of the program, you'll already feel empowered because you're going to have some confidence from tracking these these specific habits around whatever track is needed for you in this season of your life right now. So that's what makes it unique and different. So you have this clear, flexible, because hello, life happens, flexible, healthy habit strategy. You have this empowerment and confidence because you were able to do it. And then after you're done, you have these other plans already in place. So maybe you focus on food freedom now, but great, I have a workout plan for you. Or if you wanna go work out at Orange Theory, or if you just wanna walk every day, 
we're going to be able to give you the steps to start stacking and tracking more habits as time goes on. If you're like me, you've tried to do it all at once. If maybe you're already planning for the new year and you're like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to meal plan. I'm going to journal every day. I'm going to set aside time for devotionals. I'm going to do this, 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 this. And then by the end of January, you're not doing it anymore, right? Because it's too overwhelming. So we're just going to focus on those fundamental needs. We're fo- coming from a place of health and wellness, right? But we're only focusing focusing on one of those fundamental needs and will help you get through it. So you are going to lose the guilt. You're going to build confidence in yourself from the inside out, which kind of almost goes along with today's episode because sometimes the outer reflects the inside and the inside reflects the outside of what's going on. So just a quick overview of what we're covering every week. So number one, this isn't going to take a lot of your time promise. So we'll have weekly group calls. You'll have two one-on-one calls with me and you'll have access to me um, via Slack and the group on Slack as well. We're not going to do this on social media, on Facebook, because that's too much of a distraction. We don't need any extra distractions, right? So let me talk about what we're going through each week. So it's boot camp for your mind, body, and soul pretty much. Week one is why your habits haven't been working for you and it's not your fault. So a continuation of why women have to do habits differently. Week two, we're going to simplify your health and how to lose the diet culture BS. Week three, we'll be talking about atomic habits for women and realistic habit strategy 101. So in week four, we're going to pair it together and then it's time for you to pick your track. Then you're going to stack it, track it for 21 days, okay? Halfway through that that time, the week week five, we'll be doing a gut check. We're going to see how it's working and how to anticipate failure and some fail-proof ways to keep yourself going, right? And then lastly, transform, reset, repeat. And so how to be consistently flexible from there on out. So it's one-time payment, payment plans available. I'm only taking 10 ladies. Because because you're, I need to be able to dedicate my time to you because we're going to be doing one-on-one calls with each of you and we're going to be doing group calls with you as well. You're not going to find another healthy habit plan like this. Like I am so pumped up and excited when I was piecing this together. I was just so pumped because I know I'm probably speaking to your heart right now. And this is the type of kick in the pants that you need right now, right? Coming from me as a ha- habit and fitness coach, like I could, I could work out all day, right? I could teach you how to do a food freedom plan. I could say like, oh yeah, talk nice to yourself. But if you don't have the habit strategy in place, really from that realistic female perspective, it's not going to work, okay? It's just not because I know it hasn't worked. It hasn't worked for me in the past until I finally paired actual healthy habits, not just diet culture BS, healthy habits with habit strategy and doing it from a real way of being a crazy busy working mom with distractions and all the things happening and trying to just give myself a little more grace and self-compassion and I want that for you too. Woo! So come join us in Habit Transformation Boot Camp. I'm so excited about the couple of ladies that signed up from last week. I can't wait to welcome more. We only have 10 spots available. So you better hurry. It's linked in the show notes or bit.ly slash Habit Transformation Boot Camp. And friends, if you haven't already, make sure to go listen to the limited time private podcast series, Atomic Habits for Women. This is a limited series. It's available only until January 2nd. And, you know, we're talking about in Atomic Habits for Women, how women have to do habits differently. We're digging super deep into why it's harder for us sometimes, right? And I really feel like today's subject matter goes with really how we have to do it differently. We have clutter in our heads and in our space, and it's like always in the back of your mind, right? It distracts you from doing what you'd really like to do. You have you like, oh man, I still have to, you know, fold this laundry. And it's a visible reminder sometimes. And it's just weighing you down and distracts you from doing the things that you really need to prioritize and do, right? You know, um, at this time of year, you know, when the kids especially were really little and would get like a lot of toys, like from the grandparents and aunts and uncles and stuff, I've always, I always used to do like a big clean out of their playroom and be like, oh, we're getting rid of so much stuff, and it always felt so good, right? Or now we go through clothes because, you know, they outgrow things about every six months. My teenagers kind of leveled off for <laughs> for now until the next growth spurt. But, you know, that feels good. But doing, doing a big clean out or declutter like that can also feel overwhelming, right? You're like, oh, my gosh, where do I start? Where do I start? 
Or maybe you find yourself adding to the clutter. I know for me, in all transparency, being very vulnerable with you right now, I'm super aware that when I'm stressed or anxious or when I'm doubting myself, I stress shop. I get online and shop and I'm usually buying like a jump shoot, jumpsuit or like a cute <laughs> hat or uh, like flowy pants. Like I have like my go-tos that make me feel better when I wear them, which is silly because I wear workout clothes every day since I work out from home and teach group fitness <laughs> as well when I'm not working with clients and doing the podcast. So, you know... We need to think about, as a habit, decluttering our home and our mind, right? Decluttering your mind and your own space. And I thought, what better person to come on and do that today than Katie Joy Wells of The Maximized Minimalist. Y'all, you are going to love, love, love this episode. So let me tell you a little bit about Katie. So Katie inspires families around the world to declutter and simplify their lives so they can live to their fullest potential. Her teachings and programs have transformed the lives of hundreds of thousands of people, allowing them to live their happiest and most intentional lives. I love it. She's the founder of The Filtered Life. Life. She's regularly recognized in the top 50 self-improvement podcast with her show, The Maximized Minimalist. I love listening to her show. I strive to be like Katie. I feel like sometimes my desk can be an outward expression of all the things going on inside of my head sometimes. And, you know, it, sometimes it just piles up, right? And then you don't know where to start. And when I was thinking about you know, shows to wrap up the end of the year, I felt like decluttering your mind and decluttering your space would be a really great place because thinking about the new year and what you want to maybe remove from your life, what you want to organize, declutter, you know, it's actually a habit, right? Habits of organization and decluttering and keeping a tidy home is something that needs to be practiced, right? And it's a skill to learn in order for it to become a habit though right? You have to practice it in order for it to be. Perhaps this could even follow, uh, fall under, you know, we only talk about our three fundamental, fundamental needs here, mindset, food, freedom, and fitness. They could really fall under mindset, right? How to declutter your mind and declutter your space. I love this. So Katie has some really great tips for us to help us declutter our space without the big overwhelm and really simple pocket-sized, <laughs> pocket-sized times of your busy, busy day to do this to kind of help you lose the overwhelm, but also keeping in mind, being mindful of how when you do that, how that's going to help you declutter your mind and open up that space to live that more fulfilled life. You are going to love, love, love this episode. Get a pen and paper handy. As always, I'll be sharing my three biggest takeaways from this conversation. So stay tuned to the end, get the cliff notes then, and enjoy this conversation with Katie Joy Wells of The Maximized Minimalist. All right, gang, thank you so much again for tuning in to Self Transformed. I am so excited to dig into this conversation with Katie Wells of the Maximized Minimalist Podcast. Thank Katie, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Emily. I am so excited to dig into this conversation. This is something I need in my life, and especially at this time of year. I know a lot of folks are thinking about the subject we're going to be talking about today, but we're all about transformation, transforming our lives here on the show, hence self-transform. So I ask every guest this first question, Katie, and what does self-transform mean to you? What kind of comes to mind when you hear that phrase? Oh, this is good. Okay. So from my perspective, I guess, as a declutter expert, I think, you know, when we go through a transformation, we must let go of that, which is no longer serving us in order to focus on what actually does serve us. Right. And that allows us to step into, you know, better, happier, insert adjective of choice here, right. More authentic versions of ourselves. And, um, you know, what you teach habits and sustainability and really practical tools to help people be consistent so they can make those transformations, um, is so aligned with what I teach with decluttering. So super happy to be on the show and talk more about that. I love that. I love the idea of letting go too, cause that can be really free, but also can be really hard at times. Yeah. Too. 
For sure. For sure. Well, let's dig into you a little bit, Katie. I'd love for you to share a little bit with the audience about maybe your own transformation story. What has led you to really who you are today and what you do today, especially as a decluttering expert? Well, I I love to share this because I think when I used to hear from declutter or organization experts back when I was drowning in clutter, I was always like, I roll, you know, like, oh, she was born this way, right? Right. Um, I was not born organized or I was, you know, decluttering and organization did not come naturally to me. Um, And I think like a lot of women, clutter really didn't become so evident in my life until I had kids. (laughs) And then all the baby gear, the toys, oh my gosh, the toys clutter, all the stuff. My wardrobe was overflowing. I mean, I was in my late 20s and had clothes still in my closet from high school. It's just like no one taught me how to declutter, let go, when to audit and, you know, clear things out. And after I had my first son in 2015, I was noticing um, I was having a lot of depression, um, chronic anxiety, all of these things that I had been experiencing mental health wise prior to him. Having him were just really so much worse. And hindsight 2020 it was not a coincidence that the volume of things was going up in my home Mm -hmm. also my mental health was um, going downhill and there are so many studies that i've read um, that have come out in the last few decades that point to clutter impacting our mental health it can increase anxiety can increase depression it's not necessarily the cause for a lot of people but i think for a lot of us it's definitely a contributing factor right when you don't feel good in the space that you live in when every single corner you turn in your home or everywhere you look around you have clutter and mess and piles screaming at you that tells your brain there is more to be done and if you can imagine a partner or a child telling you every single second of the day you have more to do you have more to do right that's going to cause a lot of frustration and overwhelm and um just through my own transformation through the process uh you know i had to hit my rock bottom of, of my rock bottom we actually were involved in a car accident almost lost my husband and um, that was really the turning point for me because the day i came home from the hospital after this car accident i looked around my home and really for the first time saw it for what it was it was a disaster and maybe you've heard you know the outer is a reflection of the inner right i really took it for at face value and said if i'm already struggling um you know showing up as the mom i want to be as a person i want to be if i'm already struggling with my mental health and my husband's going to take six months to recover from this accident like i really need to dial in dig my heels in and and declutter because it was really just getting in the way um killing my time and energy it was just impacting me on so many levels and so um over about two two and a half three years i just plugged away, made a lot of mistakes along the way and had so many transformations within that time. And by no means did it take me three years to have that transformation. I was seeing those transformations, you know, within weeks and months, and that just created more motivation for me to keep going. And then I started my podcast, The Maximized Minimalist, was so, uh, you know, inspired to share this message with others. I love that. I love how most podcasters I talk to, we all have our own story and it's like, okay, I got to tell everyone because I feel (laughs) so much better and everyone else needs to feel this way too. I love that. Well, and like you mentioned, you know, sometimes the outside clutter can be a reflection of what's going on internally. And I feel like we have a lot of times, a lot of physical clutter and a lot of like mental and emotional clutter at the same time. And it just piles up over time, right? So why do you feel like we hold on to so much of that literal and figurative clutter in our lives? Why do we hold on to that or keep adding to it for that matter? You know, from like a really logistic standpoint, like I mentioned earlier, a lot of us aren't taught like it's a life skill, like to, to learn how to organize and prioritize and plan, right? And a lot of that happens just with growing up, like we learn to do these things, you know, prioritize, like how do I get through my day? How do I get through my day efficiently and do all these things I wanna do? That's, young kids can't do that, but we learn as we grow up. And I think with clutter, like no one teaches us, like I wasn't taught to declutter, were you taught how to declutter or like, mm-hmm. hey, go through your closet every few months, here's questions to ask, right? None of us. <laughs> and I think a lot of a lot of kids weren't raised that way. And then, you know, in a lot of sense, we live in a society where we're just really materialistic, right? And so we start and like, you know, success is seen in like accumulation and what car and what home you live in and all these things. And I think one common thing 
theme I hear in the clutter world is that clutter can um, distract us from the really amazing, incredible things in life, right? Presence, connection, slow, peace, happiness, time with family, time for yourself. But I think people really hang on to clutter in a subconscious way because on the flip side of that coin, clutter also distracts us from pain. It distracts us from um, trauma, emotional clutter, whatever you want to call it, spiritual clutter. And I think a lot of us have just so much pain we're holding on to, and it's really, really hard to face. I know I felt this way. And the more I talk about it, the more people are like, oh my gosh, maybe that is why I'm holding on to clutter. Because clutter is a distraction. And if we're constantly distracted, we don't have any opportunity to face that pain, to grow from it, maybe to learn from it or to heal from it. And so I think on a very deep level, um, that is definitely one big reason why some people just don't want to face it. Mm. Well, you know, and just thinking about my own personal habits over the years, like when I'm like anxious or like, oh, I'm sad about something. It's so easy just to be like, oh, add to cart and yeah. get something to have like almost like a dopamine hit to feel better. And then you get that and everything's so easily accessible now. Like even with my two boys, they're like adding things to my Amazon cart all the time because they're like, oh, I need this. It's just like a quick, it'll be here in 24 hours, right? And I think over time, you know, that all just starts to add up. And over time, yes. you realize this is a habit now that I've developed. And is it really serving me over time, right? Yeah. Impulse shopping is, was a doozy for me too, or just maybe buying things we don't need. Like, right, mm -hmm. maybe we wake up one morning, we have no intention of buying a new pair of boots or a new coat for winter. And we hop on, see one of our favorite fashion influencers promoting what she's promoting that day. And we're like, oh. I need that. I want that. Right. Add mm -hmm. to cart. There's no uh, l little to no pause, reflection, intention, because it's we're trained not to have that. We're trained to be unconscious consumers. Mm, yeah, totally. Well, what are some habits maybe we could start implementing today? Like something really simple to maybe help us pause, like you said, and mm -hmm. then start eliminating the clutter? I guess that's a two part question. <laughs> yes. So for the first part, definitely. Um, I think if, if shopping is an issue, if you're like, oh, yeah, it would be nice to reduce the inflow of things, right? Because we could declutter as much as we want. But if we're constantly bringing stuff into our home, it's going to be an uphill battle forever. So just taking more pause and consideration and identifying any triggers that cause you to maybe want to add to cart, check out what your favorite fashion influencer is selling. If Is that boredom? For a lot of people, it's stress boredom for other people like me any type of stress or anxiety trigger right what's happening in your internal environment that's causing you to want to pick up your phone or you know open your laptop to purchase identifying those triggers pausing and literally just waiting 24 to 48 hours before you buy something it makes it's a small nuance but it honestly makes a big difference within one to two days most of the time you'll have completely forgotten. And then as far as uh, habits to kind of keep the clutter away and just that are really great for you to develop and for your family, two things I swear by. Number one, from a clutter perspective, it, our clutter audits. So um, this is just where you start working decluttering into your normal everyday routine. So the next time you're putting maybe clean dishes away in your cabinet, you take literally less than a minute, 30 seconds to 45 seconds, Emily, Look at the back of your cabinet before you're putting all the clean dishes away and be like, why do I need 16 coffee mugs, right? We use the same two every day anyway. Maybe I'll start editing and getting rid of a few at a time and um, until I reach a point where I'm just happy with how many we have, right? The melted plastic, baby, whatever, all the toddler where that gets like melted in the dishwasher, all yeah. these things, like we tend to just have too much of it. And I know some people, a lot of women tend to feel overwhelmed. Like, when am I gonna find the time to declutter? It's like, yeah. you literally don't need a ton of time. You're putting silverware away, do a quick audit, get rid of some excess, some broken, some unused. You're putting clothing away instead of putting all the clothes that uh, for your kids back into a drawer that you can barely you know shut anyway because it's overflowing get rid of some things that they've outgrown uh, you know donate sell some things if you need to and um, this is something you could do on a daily basis I mean a weekly basis at minimum so clutter audits have been a game changer for me and I think what's really cool is once they become a habit you don't even have to think about it you're just constantly editing your possessions and you see them in a new light right like what's serving me in the season and what's not. And it just helps you literally cut through the clutter and be able to make a decision. 
Uh, the second habit we swear by, and this is more about maintaining that expected mess because mess happens to everyone. And I'm a big advocate of like, let's normalize mess folks, like stop looking and comparing your home and your mess and your clutter to like these perfectly curated Pinterest images that literally drive me bonkers. I'm like, no, no, no. These are staged photos that have taken six hours to create. They've been edited with amazing lighting. You know, there's no families living here. Um, and so that for those, for expected mess, I highly recommend doing what I call daily resets. So I would pick maybe one to two spots within a home that tend to accumulate a lot of mess throughout the day. Um, for a lot of people, that's like kitchen counters, kitchen islands, kitchens, living rooms, places like that, where there's a lots of in and out, lots of things going to and from. And basically these take, I mean, usually less than like five minutes and you and your family just spend time putting things away, right? Putting things back where they belong. Maybe should have been put in the first place, but right, we're, we're human. <laughs> we don't always put things back where they belong the first time. And I think getting the family on board is so important with this because I know a lot of women feel like it's all on them, mm -hmm. right? But being able to coach and teach your children, I mean, even as young as like one or two to like, here, let's put your blocks away when we're done playing with the toys and before we get a new one out. Or, hey, everyone, you know, it's dinner time. So before we start dinner, let's put our shoes away and hang up our backpacks and put all our homework away. That way you can like focus on your family and not have to worry about all the chores and all the to-dos and all the mess behind you when you're trying to enjoy, you know, a nice family meal. So clutter audits and daily resets, two habits I swear by. Okay, real quick. I know you have felt this way before too. You start a new healthy habit routine and you find a good flow, but then life gets in the way and you find yourself in a new season of life or a new year and that healthy habit routine just isn't working for you anymore. Instead of just giving up, join me for the next live Healthy Habit Reset January 10th, 11th, and 12th at 12 p.m. Eastern. So during the reset, you will learn the simple five-step habit change method that I only share in this masterclass where I take the overwhelm and confusion out of health and teach you how to reset your habits for whatever season of life you are in. The new year is a really great time to reevaluate what habits are working for you or not. And of course, we're going to have a heavy dose of habit strategy from the female perspective. Okay, and I know what you're thinking. How long is this going to take me? I know your time is precious. So each day will only be there for about 15, 20 minutes max and replays will be sent out with, to you. Plus, I'll have a workbook to help you take action so it won't take up a ton of your time. So go to bit.ly slash healthy habit reset to sign up and reserve your spot. I'll see you inside of the reset. All right, let's get back to the show. I love that so much, Katie. Well, a couple of things. When you were talking about like before you add to cart, I've made a new rule for myself. I'm like, okay, wait a day, unless it's actually like something we really need for like the home. But if it's something I can't stop thinking about, I know it's something that I'm going to love. It's going to bring me a lot of joy. It's not just something that I'm getting at an impulse. Then I'll go for it. I'm even implementing that rule <laughs> with my kids as well. Good for too. you. But also I love the idea of just small little audits throughout the day and resets that, that seems so less overwhelming. And it makes me think back over the past couple of weeks, you know, we had someone come on and we were talking about confidence and your style and we got into closet audits and I was like, oh my gosh, my closet has just exploded. It's been a year since I audited it. This seems so overwhelming and it turned into a great big task. And then my office, I've been in the middle of switching some things around and um, with the business and my office has just exploded and I had to sit down and like reset and it took a whole day and it took away time from like actually really productive work I needed to do. But I felt so much more clear headed and ready yes. to go. And I wish I would have, you know, <laughs> talked to you a couple months ago. That way I would have had smaller little pockets of this. Okay. I'm just going to do little bitty resets here. So it's not so overwhelming. I think when you have like that big mess that has just happened, mm -hmm. then you just feel paralyzed and you're like, this is an impossible task. Yes. I don't have time. I don't want to do this. That seems so much more simple to do that. Yeah. And just like you said, so this is a, this is actually a really big issue. Most people don't want to tackle the problem until it's too big of a problem. And then procrastination kicks in. And that is actually procrastination is a predictive factor in clutter accumulation mm -hmm. and clutter accumulation creates 
more pro procrastination. So it becomes this really vicious cycle for a lot of people. And then, right, we tend to look for like elusive five hour time slots in our day or like, oh my gosh, I have to take the day off work like you did. Like, oh, I can't do that. Or, you know, I have all these other responsibilities. Like, how am I going to do this? So then we just don't take action. The piles continue to grow. And meanwhile, we are, you know, our time and energy are being sucked away, our mental bandwidth and um it's 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 tough so i i think that's one of the best things i learned over the years is sometimes especially as perfectionists right sometimes i know i'm a recovering one like we want it now like we, we're like okay i know what i need to do i just need the time mm. and i need the a whole weekend kid free and then i can make this work but that's not possible for a lot of us right we're so busy and so i think reevaluating and creating new benchmarks for what success really looks like is so important here and so kind of dropping the like okay maybe a weekend kid free isn't possible and even if it were like i probably wouldn't spend it decluttering you know what i mean like I'd, maybe you'd go do something fun imagine that right <laughs> or something you want to do right um and so these little habits daily which i know you're such an advocate for in the wellness space are so huge and they pay dividends in the long run and i think most people just underestimate those dividends and want the results now but can't find the time you know to do yeah. it so this is really uh the, the best way i found that makes the most sense and it's really practical and sustainable well, and just really modeling that for your kids too. I have two boys. Yes. The oldest is 14. And, you know, I feel like every few months we're having to do closet audits or we're always wanting to get new shoes <laughs> for that matter to being a 14 year old boy. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed when they, you know, you know, take responsibility for their own things. And we do audits I'm like, okay, is this something I'm really using? Or my younger ones, is this something I really still play with anymore? It feels good to give it up. And then it's just like a momentum that keeps happening. And then we have a conversation like, how much better do you feel now that you did this and you cleaned out all that mess? And every time they're like, oh, I feel so much better. And I don't yes. think we have to ask ourselves that too. Right. Like, how are you going to feel on the other side? Yes. Yeah, even, I mean- one a great place to start for anyone listening who's like okay like i'm overwhelmed i always recommend surface areas because that's where stuff lands and a lot of things that land on surface areas are like the procrastination like i don't know what to do with this this doesn't have a home i'm going to toss it here or it's like the stuff that you know there's a true home for it but for whatever reason it didn't get put back and even just doing that clearing off your countertops and like your kitchen table if that's the, the clutter hot spot can be such an instant facelift to your home. And honestly, it's like your attitude. It's like, oh, wow. It feels good to spend time in spaces that are clutter free because our, brian our brains were designed to like white space and to like space. So that way we can clearly identify wh what we need to focus on or and you know who we need to focus on. Mm. And it's, it's, it's just a really valuable thing to be able to um, just take action, whether that's 30 seconds or 30 minutes one week. I love that. Your clutter hotspot minus my kitchen counter, for sure. Yes, <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> minus my kitchen counter. I feel like, yep, there's stuff on there right now. That's okay, though. <laughs> well, it's okay. Well, I'm going to do an audit. I'll just do a quick little reset, and we're good to go. Light a candle 100%. at the end. Make it seem real that's nice. right. Oh, yeah, get that. <laughs> Nice fall winter candle. Yeah. Going. My kids always know like, oh, mom just, you know, cleaned up a little bit. She lit the candle. It's good to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's safe to enter. <laughs> it's safe to enter now. Well, I'm wondering, you know, there's a lot of working moms that listen to my show. I know your show as well, Katie. I feel like, and I know you just talked about this on your show. We've talked about it here lots of times. There's such an invisible load on us as moms that we mm -hmm. carry around. And I love how you mentioned earlier, like, it's not just up to you. So how can you ask for help to start decluttering in your home from your whole family? That way you can take some of the load off of yourself and it feel a little less overwhelming. Yeah, it's so important. Um, here, I'll tell you the mistakes I made with my husband. <laughs> you can learn from me and then I'll tell you what to do. So mistakes I made are typically I brought up um, clutter or like the household mess or these different chores that were in sync with that topic when I was in a reactive state, right? I was upset. I was angry. I stepped on a Lego. I tripped over a baby, whatever toy. I was like, uh-uh, no, I'm about to rage declutter or rage on someone. Mm. And so I brought it up like, you need to help more. You need to declutter. You need to do, do, do. Like those conversations never tend to go well. And so one of my best tips is to 
have those conversations when you're not in a reactive state, when you're calm and just say, hey, you know, can we talk five minutes after we get the kids tucked in bed? And then, you know, when you have these conversations, say, you know, things like I've noticed that at the end of the nights, I'd really like to be spending more time reading books with the kids, but instead I'm doing X, Y, Z chores, picking up, decluttering, organizing. And um, one way that I would love your support is, could you help or could we take turns? And then I think when you're having that conversation, and let's just talk about specifically decluttering, like if you really want your partner to go through their stuff or support you and decluttering, share like really practical ways that they can help. Because sometimes like they just don't know, yeah, no. like, what do you mean declutter? Because it's a very vague thing. Again, most people don't really understand what that means. All they hear is you want me to get rid of my stuff? No, <laughs> it's my stuff, right? And so it causes them to clean tighter. I know it did for me um, early on. And then when it comes to decluttering, I think it's really valuable to also share with your partner and your kids your why. Why do you want a decluttered, simplified home? Because oftentimes they don't understand the what, which in this case is decluttering, if they don't understand the why. what's And, and also what's in it for them, right? Again, they're hearing, you want me to go through my shoes? I love my shoes. Why do you want me to go through my shoes? Why does mom, why can't mom lay off me? Or why can't my wife just leave me alone? <laughs> and just, I have my stuff, she has hers. And so when you um, share this information, it can really tie it together in a way that they understand like, oh yeah, I can see how um, maybe this does impact my mental health or this, how this could save me time or energy or as a family, this could save us money because as we declutter, we could sell things. We'll be more intentional about our purchases and save money that way. And maybe a reward could be like, hey, we do get to take that bucket list trip or we do get to take a fun uh, trip to see grandma and grandpa, you know, later this year. So you can make it fun. It doesn't have to be this like bane of your existence conversation. And then I think, you know, with kids, especially, and I'm raising two young kids as well, they're five and seven, we just have regular conversations with each other about decluttering, right? And I'll show them stuff I got rid of from my closet and uh, invite them to declutter my stuff with me and just sit and listen so they can hear the questions I'm asking and really learn the value in editing their environment and creating these environments where the stuff that remains really serves a purpose, whether that's it makes them happy or you know it's something that functions or they use it. Um, so really that was a long-winded way of a lot of different ways you could continue to have those conversations, but really important things to bring up. Yeah. And coming, like you said, not going at it when you're reactive and then you find yourself rage decluttering or cleaning. I can't tell you how many times I've just been like, just nobody does anything. And I'm just puffing and puffing, slam in the cabinet, slam yep. the ground, <laughs> aggressively vacuuming, like, uh -huh. helps me, you know, and, yeah. you know, I think a lot of times it's, you know, we just take it all on ourselves. And if you simply have a nice conversation where you have time where you're cooled off, a lot of times, like you said, they just don't know what they don't know. And they're like, oh, I didn't realize that was so overwhelming for you. Of course, I want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for kids too, when mine were really little, I, I explained it to them this way, you know, like even when it's them putting their shoes away, let's use a common example. So if your kids are like chucking their shoes all over your house, or they land right next to the shoe bench or like backpacks everywhere, the post school, like clutter chaos and <laughs> stuff chaos. I would explain to them, listen, if you put your lunchbox on the counter for mom, if you pull your homework out, if you hang your backpack, like I've coached them over the years, that actually saves mommy time. And the time I save is the time like we read extra books at night. Mommy has time for extra snuggles. Mommy has time to play an extra game of connect four shoots and ladders. And they're like, oh, like that's motivating for me because them, because they want to do those things. And so painting the picture maybe a little more clearly instead of just this will save me time and this will make me happier and this will make me na nag you less like those are all fine but painting it in a more like way that impacts them so they can they can visualize that a little bit more I think is really valuable it's a win-win for everybody that's I right that. I love that well last question here I want to know how has decluttering really led to a more meaningful life for you and how can we inspire others listening today to take action too it really ties in so beautifully with the topic of your podcast. Like I always, when I talk about 
the old, like literally it feels like the old version of me like when i look back at pictures i don't recognize myself right and a lot of that was clutter and the mental health issues that that exacerbated and really just a season of life because you know new motherhood is challenging um but i kind of reference myself as katie 1.0 and i've gotten all these like upgrades you know just like our iphones get <laughs> our macs or whatever pcs get every every once in a while we have these opportunities to get these upgrades and i think for me decluttering has really made my life more meaningful because I am able to focus on myself so much more than I was ever able to before and my family and really what and who matters. And it's really allowed me to embrace the pause, right? And slow down mm -hmm. in a world of hurry and rush and getting out the door as fast as we can and you know, flying to soccer practice after school, this, that, and the other. It's really helped me evaluate what matters and being able to maybe identify other spaces in my life where I could use space, other other categories, whether that's my schedule, whether that's my routine, habits, things like that. Um, so once you're able to identify what's serving you from like a very physical material possession level, there's a lot of opportunity where you can identify what's helping or hurting from a mental or right, emotional, spiritual. And so it's just so much larger, the scope of it, rather than just your physical environment, but that's still on its own, very, very important. Yeah. And just taking those small little habits, like you mentioned earlier, just once you start getting it going, I feel like there's so much momentum and you just mm -hmm. feel so much lighter it feels good yes. to let go coming back to right the beginning when we said the transformation a lot of time is about letting go i love this so much know. katie where can everyone connect with you and find out more so definitely check out the podcast it's called the maximized minimalist and new episodes are every wednesday and then my favorite platform is um instagram so that's my name katie joy wells and then also on youtube for any video watchers out there Wonderful. Well, Katie, thank you so much for this conversation. We'll make sure to link the show and your Instagram in the show notes. And I'm going to go like declutter my hotspot right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Katie, thank you so much for this conversation. I loved listening back to it. I did a quick little declutter reset around my desk before I started recording today as well, which felt really, really great. So thank you so much for those really simple tips. And friends, I hope you loved today's conversation. I know you did. I'm sure you took lots of notes. Let's get into my three biggest takeaways with this conversation with Katie Joy Wells of The Maximized Minimalist. Number one, clutter can impact our mental health, right? It can really contribute to maybe even in some anxiety, depression, self-doubt, so maybe even that all or nothing mentality we have as women a lot of times, right? Like if I can't clean it all, I'm not gonna do anything. Like what's the point in doing a little bit out of a time, right? Well, because women have to do habits differently, sometimes we have to do just a little bit at a time. And especially when it comes to removing clutter from our physical space, but also mentally as well. Like Katie mentioned, if you don't feel good in your space, it's just not, it's, it's not conducive to being, you know, living your most fulfilled life, feeling productive, feeling like you're living in a calm space, right? So keep that in mind. And, you know, another thing that can kind of really impact you with the clutter is just another tab open in your head, right? <laughs> we talk about this so much, all the tabs open in our heads and on our laptops in real life, right? We have all these things going on, not just for ourselves, but our families, work and so forth. And sometimes the clutter or the things we need to get done that we're just procrastinating and not doing kind of loom over you, right? It's in the back of your head. It's another tab open. But if we can close that tab, even if it's just a little bit at a time here and there, that's really going to take away that clutter so you can really put your time towards what really matters, your loved ones, your own health, and so forth. I love that. So number two, the outer is a reflection of what's going on inside. Oh, I feel that so much because sometimes I do, I do have a little ADHD. I won't lie to you there. And sometimes I feel kind of all over the place and I have a lot of ideas that come to my head, a lot of different hats that I wear as well. I'm sure you feel like this too. And sometimes I feel like you're either one, one end to the other. You're like, you feel like you have to control everything and you do that through keeping super, super tidy, keeping everything clean or everything explodes. Well, in my case, everything explodes. <laughs> 
<laughs> it just does. And, you know, I feel like this is true with physical and emotional clutter, right? You know, sometimes when we're trying to have like a physical transformation with our bodies, sometimes that emotional clutter going on is not going to allow those results to show physically because it sometimes it actually holds you back, right? You might be working out and maybe eating okay, but really maybe you have a lot of self-doubt and you're not talking very nice to yourself and that can really hold you back from your results. You know, something really important Katie mentioned is organization has to be a skill to learn, right? It's not a habit you just do overnight. It's something you have to learn. So I, that little extra bonus tip of, as I was listening back to this is, you know, schedule at the end of your day or, or when you get home from work or even at the beginning of your day if you have time, depending on what your morning rush <laughs> looks like to get out yourself and your kids out the door. Set, set something on your Google calendar, a little trigger like, hey, five minute cleanup real quick and just a nice little habit that you'll form over time to learn how to do some of those mini resets she was mentioning. I love that so much. And oh my gosh, I love how she she mentioned this. You know, we love to do resets, like how we do the healthy habit reset. I love doing daily resets. So there's things that you kind of do every day, right? We always go to the, we always go to bed in our house with a clean sink. We do all the dishes, the ca- kitchen counter. We try to get that cleaned up. We sweep up the dog hair. We straighten out the blankets on the couch. We do this. We do it. There's like a, a reset you do like every day, right? Um, because that could add up over time if you didn't, right? Oh my gosh, just from it being winter time and the kids and the shoes and all the extra um, <laughs> coats and backpacks and all the things. We have to reset that every day, otherwise it just kind of piles up. But I love how she mentioned doing clutter audits. I felt seen when she mentioned having, you know, so many coffee cups, but you only use a select few. So we're removing a little bit more of that clutter over time, right? Over time. Not feeling that overwhelmed from like, you know, I mentioned I did a big closet clean out earlier this year and uh, it was so overwhelming. And then when you start it, you just can't stop it. And some of those times you make a bigger mess on the way to getting it more tidy, right? So I love these tips that she shared. I hope it helps you take action and creating some habits of decluttering and keeping them small and simple and just watching them compound over time. You know, we talk about the compound effect so much, and this will be a really great way for you to build some habits of decluttering, not only your space, but also your mind over time. Doesn't that sound great? I love it so much. So Katie, thank you again so much for this conversation. I'll make sure to link everything in the show notes so you can check out the Maximize Minimalist and connect with Katie over there. I love listening to her show and aspire (laughs) to be more like her and her show as far as taking an approach to decluttering and that Maximize Minimalist mentality. I love it so much. So friend, if you want to join me for Habit Transformation, boot camp. I am here for it. I am so pumped. It's linked in the show notes for you. Like I said earlier, I created this program with you in mind and you're not going to find another diet plan or because it's not a diet. You're not going to find another workout plan because it's not just about the workouts. You're not going to find another like mindset, life coach, whatever, because we're doing it all from the lens of we have to do this different as women Here's the strategy that we will use as women, and here are the fundamental needs we really we should just focus on to kind of uncomplicate health, make it a little less overwhelming so we can reset our habits and take care of ourselves so we stop just merely survive, but thrive and show up as the best versions of ourselves for our loved ones. I love it so much. Any questions you have about Habit habit Transformation Boot Camp, let me know. You can still listen to Atomic Habits for Women as well up until January 2nd. Until this next Thursday, if you need anything, please send me an email. Shoot me an email with any questions you have if you want to join us for Boot Camp. I can't wait. And I'll catch up with you guys later this week for Habit Hack Thursday. Hey girl, real quick before you go, if you want some free motivation texted to you every week to help you habit hack your health, send me your favorite emoji to 773-904-2157 to sign up for my weekly pump up text. I can't wait to catch up with you there. And if you have any quick questions for me or feedback, it's me on the other end. So text me back, friend. 
And if you love the show, the number one way you can thank me is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way more mamas can find the show. Tag me in your Instagram stories at emilynichols22. What you love about the show. Show me your review so I can shout you out. Love and appreciate you, friend. I'll see you next time.